Special operations alongside his Russian counterpart, Polikar Pesquio Team. Sporting, racing, and uh, touring aircraft, like touring aircraft, we're getting out of the pocket of the average flyer. They were becoming more and more expensive. So what he wanted was something that anybody could own. It's the Western Lysander. two years later, and the intention being to replace the biplanes that were then in service with the Army Cooperation Squadrons of the Royal Air Force, aircraft like the Hawker Hector. Army Cooperation at the time, very important to allow aircraft, particularly low-flying, small reconnaissance aircraft, to communicate with the troops, either by radio or by light signals, or by literally dropping and recovering messages. The original Lysand had a hook on the bottom of the fuselage to pick up message bags from the ground. Rescue aircraft and as a target tug, but then 
when we started needing to fly agents, spies and resistance fighters in and out of France. We took the role in the colour scheme it appears here, which was a special operations executive transport aircraft. on special operations. Interesting, the Ben 10 Charlie flights by the Korean Polikarpov actually took out more P-51s and Sabres on the ground than they lost. So actually, the Koreans won that one. The real heroes or heroines, should we say, were pilots like uh, Yekaterina Ryabova and Nadeja Popova, who the, were the night witch pilots. Both of those pilots survived the war, having flown over a thousand missions in Polikarpov's standpoint. Stone in the light handle, lovely display from him. And a big tank under the fuselage, you can see by the way, ladies and gentlemen, didn't just supply fuel for the engine, it just, didn't just increase the range of the light handle, the ambulance. Standingly useful, the layer of Its versatility was the key to its success, absolutely for sure. The other interesting thing is how the night witches got their name, because what they would do is they'd approach their target area at very low level, pull up as high as they could, and then cut the throttle. So they were actually in a gliding approach to bomb, and all you could hear was the whistle of the wind in the wires. Now, I don't know whether, as it lines up tonight to, to land and the throttle comes back, you'll actually hear that whistle of the wind in the wires. You'll certainly hear it also in some of the first world war aircraft a little bit later. And that was kind of the main engine that got the name. The Finns actually had another name for it, hence that engine note. They used to call it the nerve sword. Super display by Paul Stone in the nice hand. Give him a wave as he taps in. Give him a round of applause. It was a super display. Zero two, Roger. The uh, Cub shortly to report. 